Alright, what is up guys, it is Storm back here with another video, and in this one I am bringing you Legacy and Naruto Story Part 60. Now, if you want to check this story out for yourself, the link to it will be down in the description below. But before the video begins, if you like the content you're seeing, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. I mean, they're all free, so why not? If you want some dope channel merch, the link that'll be down in the description below. And if you want to see more of me, go check out my other channels and go follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, which will all be linked down below. But, without further ado... Why don't we just dive right on in? Konoha. The entire village was in a state of bliss and excitement. The reason behind all of this? The news that the previous Hokages had been brought to life had spread through the village like a wildfire. Mere hours after that council meeting had finished and already all of Konoha knew about the return of the fallen heroes. And everyone in the village, be it civilian or shinobi, always tried their best to walk by the Senju compound in a desperate attempt to even catch a small glimpse of the Okages. Every Okage had been a friend, a leader, an icon to the people. And for those who didn't have the pleasure of knowing the legends in person, they did their best to at least see them. Tsunade had confined everyone to the compound during the last few days, waiting for the dust to settle, so to speak. It wasn't every day that the fifth Okage barged into the roof of the newly reconstructed Okage tower and shouted that the previous Okages had been resurrected to the whole village. There was no finesse in her speech. It was a single shot that left most of the people rooted in place, with their jaws on the ground. Then again, finesse wasn't exactly a typical trait of the Senju clan. They tended to be louder and somewhat reckless to a fault, not to mention the unhealthy addiction to ramen. Not that Teiji was complaining, of course. The additional customers all looking to catch a glimpse of Naruto helped a lot. But anyways, let us focus on Naruto, who is currently laying down in his bed with Hinata sleeping next to him. It was still early in the day, so it was no surprise. What am I gonna do now? Naruto thought to himself, playing with the strain of Hinata's silky hair. He had been so focused on the last three years of his life to train and train. His sole focus had been to become as strong as possible to take down the Akatsuki. But now that he had done that, he felt disappointed? No, that wasn't it. Sad? No, that wasn't either. He felt bored. With the Akatsuki alive, there is always a threat of something sparking and throwing him into combat. Now, he spent his days dealing with the paperwork that came with the position of clan head. Maybe he wasn't cut out to become Okage. Not if he had to deal with the paperwork 8 hours a day. He had to find something productive to do, or he would go crazy. He still didn't know how to approach the whole bring peace to the world mission. Naruto was broken when he heard a particularly loud crash coming from the kitchen. The sound of dishes breaking and smashing to the floor came followed by a horrified screech of fear. Naruto raised an eyebrow when everything became quiet once again. Too quiet for his taste. That was why Naruto didn't even flinch in bed when the door to his room opened loudly and Kurama came running inside still in his chibi form. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the look of sheer desperation the fox had. Naruto, you've got to help me. Hide me. Summon me back to the seal, anything, Kurama said quickly, his voice filled with complete despair. What'd you do? Naruto asked in amusement. He looked over to see Hinata stir, slowly rubbing her eyes, pushing the sleep away. Morning, Hinata mumbled, watching Kurama bounce frantically in Naruto's chest. Quickly, she's coming, Kurama shouted. Who's coming? Hinata asked in confusion while Naruto just shrugged his shoulders in ignorance. Hide me, Kurama pleaded. Kurama. A husky, soft voice cooed from the entrance of the room. From the sound of it, it was definitely female. Naruto looked over Kurama and spotted Matatabi strolling in calmly. Naruto looked back to Kurama and noticed his eyes widen with fear. Here you are, Matatabi cooed, jumping on the bed and landing on top of Hinata. Come here, Tabi will take good care of you, she purred. While Kurama backed away slowly, Naruto watched in amusement as Kurama turned to him with pleading eyes. What's wrong? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Already tired of your family after only one week? Naruto taunted jokingly. Save me! She craves my body, Kurama said. Both Naruto and Hinata looked at each other in surprise. I didn't know you were into that type of thing, Naruto chuckled, while Kurama just glared at him. So soft, Matatabi purred, rubbing herself in the sheets on top of Hinata. These sheets are so soft. What has she been drinking, Hinata asked, looking at the cat beat you. She's starting to freak me out. Is there catnip in Konoha? Naruto asked, trying to account for Matatabi's attitude. I know that the Yamanaka and Nara clans supply the hospital with many herbs, catnip included, but 
I don't know if there's any in the wild, Hinata replied. Um, you smell like the fox boy, Matatabi purred, and tried to look Hinata in the face but was pushed backwards. So, she's high on that stuff, Karama sighed in relief. She's a Biju though, that stuff shouldn't affect her, not to ponder while well, Naruto just chuckled. The best way to picture Matatabi is like a cat infused with Senjutsu, even though she was created. She shares many traits with the cats in general, Naruto explained, and watched as Matatabi's pupils dilated, and she started rolling the bed, wrapping herself in the blankets. Matatabi meowed happily and dropped her head, falling asleep. Ah, safe at last, Karama sighed, in relief and dropped to the bed while Naruto just laughed. That wasn't funny, Karama snapped. I was nearly uh, assaulted by my sister, if you know what I mean, Karama whined, putting a paw over his eyes. Knock, knock. It's 6 a.m., Naruto grumbled, hiding beneath the sheets while Hinata giggled in reply, hiding as well. However, as much as Naruto wanted whoever was knocking to go away, it didn't. The knocking started becoming more and more frantic as time went by as in mere moments the wooden door was already shaking from the poundings. Oh, for the love, come in, he snapped. The wooden door slammed open and a head peeked inside the room. Ah, oh, Shirama, what do you want? Oh, why are you naked? Naruto yelled, jumping from the bed. Hashiram was completely naked, trying to hide his you-know-what with his hands. What is wrong with you? Naruto shouted, walking up to his great-great-grandfather. You don't just barge into someone else's room naked. Hinata simply chose to avert her gaze. There were some things that were left best to the imagination. Not that she imagined a naked Hashiram in the first place. I'll just stop thinking about it, Hinata thought, finding her quiet place for all the ruckus at 6am. You've got to help me, Hashirama pleaded. Ah, it burns, he whined. Explain, Naruto sighed. It's like this, me and Mito were, um, you know, Hashirama struggled for words. Doing the deed, Naruto offered, and Hashirama nodded furiously, grimacing as another wave of what seemed like pain washed over him. She still doesn't have full control over that paper bloodline you gave her, and in the heat of the moment, she, she... Ashirama trailed off, and both Naruto and Hinata's eyes widened, unintentionally drawing their eyes to Hashirama's special area. Don't tell me that she gave you a paper cut down there, Naruto asked, and Hashirama nodded furiously. Naruto felt a shiver run up his spine. Now fix it, Hashirama demanded, taking his hands away and displaying his manhood for all to see. Ah! Naruto yelled, looking to the side. I'm not touching that thing. You don't have to touch it, just do the whole green thing, Hashirama pleaded, and Naruto reluctantly agreed. Naruto slowly approached and knelt to the ground, placing his hands a good foot away from him. His hands glowed green and Hashirama sighed in relief. There, Naruto said, getting up as fast as he could. Now go away and learn some decency, Naruto said, and Hashirama laughed, thanking him profoundly. That was the greatest thing I ever witnessed. The great Hashirama Senju got a paper cut on his junk. Karama laughed, rolling on the ground. There's something wrong with your side of the family, Hinata said deadpan. Now, now, Hina, we do share the same ancestor after all. We're all descendants of Princess Kakia, Naruto lectured, while well, Hinata just rolled her eyes. Yes, but my family branch has some decency at least, Hinata explained, thinking back to the Hyuga clan. Your family enslaved their own blood, Naruto replied deadpan. Okay, point, Hinata conceded. And don't get me started on the whole decency thing, Naruto began in a sing-sing voice. You have the Byagagon which grants you x-ray vision. Are you telling me that you never peek beneath someone's clothing, Naruto asked in a teasing voice. Absolutely not, Hinata huffed in a playful defiance. You sure, Naruto teased, rolling on top of her. You never took a peek at me before, you know, we, uh, we did the deed, Naruto asked, placing a soft kiss on her neck. Akure, oh, they're going at it again, Krama grumbled and thought, letting himself out of the room and dragging the unconscious Matatabi with him. He planned on chaining Matatabi somewhere to be safe. After getting a little too close for comfort, the exchanged word, which is a little, I don't know, a little weird, I ain't reading this part of the story, so if you want to, you can do it yourself. Now on to the next part. With Madara. Madara sat on the throne, twirling a small locket of golden hair. He was lost in thoughts that he didn't even notice Zetsu appearing in front of him. Master, Zetsu called, breaking Madara from his musings. What do you want? Madara asked evenly. Are you going to sit there all day musing about your past? Zetsu asked, and Madara raised an eyebrow in amusement. 
Since when do you care about what I do? Madara asked with annoyance. Because reasons, Setsu replied. Huh. Madara grunted. Tell me, Setsu, what is the state of the Elemental Nations? He asked with some curiosity. The Elemental Nations have been rather peaceful for around 25 years. If you don't count a few slides here and there, as of now, Konoha is allied with Kiri due to their help in the Bloodline Wars. There's talk about a possible alliance between Konoha and Kumo, but that's just rumors. Suna and Iwa are also fully allied and bear a particular grudge against the Leaf, Zetsu finished. I died shortly after Minato wiped out Iwa's army, but I remember Suna being on good terms with Konoha, Madara explained. Three years ago, Suna teamed up with Orochimaru and launched a surprise invasion on Konoha. They were slaughtered and ended up losing their Kage. Their only Biju and nearly a fifth of their forces as well. After that, things became sour between Konoha and Suna, Zetsu explained. While Madara just shook his head. Amateurs, Madara chuckled. And Iwa, he asked. They have done a few tries over the years, but nothing significant, Zetsu answered. And Madara pondered on his next move. What will you do? Zetsu asked. I guess I'll pay a visit to dear old Anoki, Madara replied, getting up. But first, I need to check on something, Madara said, and slammed his hand in the ground. Summoning Jutsu, Madara said, and with a mighty roar, the Ghetto Mazo burst from the ground. Madara looked at the statue and focused on linking up with it. Tell me, Zetsu, Madara began with a normal tone. What is wrong with this picture? He asked, pointing towards the Ghetto Mazo in front of him. I don't understand, Master. Zetsu cocked his head in confusion. The Ghetto Mazo seems to be missing a couple biju, Madara applauded with annoyance. You told me that Fugaku and Nagato had managed to capture the Nibi, Sanbi, Yonbi, Gobi, and the Rokubi, and yet the Ghetto Mazo is empty, Madara informed him. I don't know, Master. Where are my eyes? Madara asked, trying his best to hide his annoyance at Zetsu. I, um... Conan, um, Zetsu stammered, when he felt Madara's killing intent rising. Zetsu, Madara growled. Where is my Renegon? He asked. Nagato had them, but after the battle, they were gone, Zetsu gulped under Madara's glare. Conan will know, a ask her, Zetsu answered quickly. And where is Conan? Madara asked. I'm a Gekir, Zetsu replied. Take me there, Madara ordered and Zetsu nodded quickly, disappearing into the ground. Next time, maybe I should give more intelligence to my creations. Zetsu is almost as dumb as a rock, Madara sighed, shaking his head. Hidden Rain Village. This concludes the meeting. Thank you all, Conan said, getting up and leaving the meeting room. The Hidden Rain Village was going well enough, but things were more difficult to handle without Nagata there. He was the leader. He knew how to run things better than her. Will do, Lady Conan, Kuro replied and walked away. Conan sighed and walked towards Payne's tower. She chuckled softly at the name, but didn't have the heart to change it. The tower in the whole village was her memento to Nagato and Yahiko. She stepped inside the room and felt unusually nervous. She stood in the doorway. The entire room was pitch black, with a few thunders lighting up the room momentarily. A loud thunder roared in the sky and gave enough light for Conan to notice the outline of a man sitting on Nagato's chair. Who are you? Conan asked, her voice taking a dangerous tone. Who knows? The figure chuckled, and Conan saw that the figure was definitely male from the deep voice. What do you want? She asked firmly, her body already showing several cracks as her bloodline triggered into action, expecting battle. What belongs to me? The man replied, getting up and starting to walk forward. Conan took a step back and prepared herself for battle as the man walked forward, still shrouded in darkness. Step. Another thunder lit the room, enough to show the man's feet and upper legs. He was clad in a samurai-like red armor. Step. Conan looked up as the man approached, one step at a time. Her eyes widened when another thunder lit the room and showed the man's face. Blood-red eyes, with long, black, spiky hair. Madara Uchiha, Conan whispered, finally noticing the white Zetsu in the corner, watching everything. So that Toby fellow worked for you, Conan asked while Madara chuckled. Worked? Madara asked with amusement. You seem to be mistaken. He was my pawn. It's as simple as that. Yes, Conan drawled. She didn't exactly have much love for Toby either. What do you want? She asked. What belongs to me? Madara replied once more. Conan just stared blankly at him. My eyes. I want my Renegon back, Madara said. Conan's eyes widened. Don't be so surprised. I gave him the Renegon to begin with. 
He was supposed to bring me back with it, but alas, not everything worked out as I had planned. Modric chuckled. I don't know. Conan said neutrally. Let us agree to not lie to each other. Okay, Madara asked, and Conan didn't reply. I will ask again. Where is my Renegon? Madara stressed. I don't- Conan didn't even see it coming. One moment, Madara was a few feet away. The other, he was standing right in front of her, his right arm extended. Conan received a strong punch to the stomach. It felt like being hit by a train. She felt blood vessels burst. Her diaphragm collapsed from the pressure. Her knees buckled from the force of the blow, and as she went down, she swore she heard a cracking noise ricochet between her ribs. She landed on her knees, spewing out blood from her mouth like a fountain. What did we agree on? Mater asked, gently rising Conan's chin upwards. He noticed the pain and bloodied expression on her face. Now, where? Or my eyes, Mater asked calmly. Where, oh, where are you? Conan coughed. We'll never get them. Conan chuckled weakly, and Madara dropped her to the floor. Why can't people just answer truthfully? Madara sighed. You could have lived, you know. I only wanted the running on. But now, now I guess I'll keep the rain village as well. Madara said with a dark smile. Conan rose as fast as she could to protest, but Madara slammed his hand over her chest. Human path. Madara ripped Conan's soul out of her body, ridding her mind in the process. Conan's body toppled to the floor, her eyes opened wide and staring blankly into nowhere. Naruto, Madara sighed. You are getting on my nerves, and I haven't even met you. With Naruto. Naruto, what are you doing here? Sadi asked seeing Naruto strolling inside her office carelessly and plopping down on the couch. Stuff, Naruto replied tiredly and leaned back on the couch, releasing a sigh of bliss. Tsunade let him be and focused back on the paperwork reproducing on the desk. Naruto groaned and Tsunade looked up, but he still had his eyes closed. Five minutes later, Naruto groaned again and Tsunade's eyes twitched. Naruto groaned again and Tsunade jumped to her feet. Naruto, she snapped. What are you doing here? She snarled. Protecting you from assassins, Naruto replied offhandedly, looking at the ceiling. Doesn't anyone ever attack you? Naruto asked. And you could feel the hidden Anbu shake their heads in disbelief. Danzo tried it two weeks ago, Sonata informed him, and sat back down, having taken out her frustrations with the previous shout. Naruto was about to groan again and most likely be punched out of the room by Tsunade, when there was a soft knock on the door. Come in, Sonata replied, welcoming any type of break that didn't originate from Naruto. Shizune's head peeked inside the room. There is a team from Iwa wishing to speak with you. They say it's urgent, Shizune informed, and both Naruto and Tsunade raised an eyebrow. Send them in, Tsunade replied, and Shizune opened the door fully. A team of three stepped inside the room, flanked by two Anbu. Naruto looked up from the couch and spotted familiar faces in all three of them, some friendlier than others. Lady Hokage, all three shinobi bowed slightly as a sign of respect, even if our particular brash male on the team didn't have any. Lord Senju, Kurosuji said turning towards Naruto and bowing once more. Naruto raised an eyebrow at their greeting but moved on. Kurotsuchi, Naruto replied, and she nodded once. Taisuke, Naruto said, and the man huffed. Ren, Naruto said happily, and the girl waved shyly. Congratulations on making Jonin. I knew you had it in you, Naruto said, and Ren nodded quickly, trying desperately to cool down her cheeks. Naruto, Sonata said, breaking the conversation. Stop hitting on the girl. You're a married man, for God's sake. Sonata laughed while Naruto just shook his head in amusement. Anyway, Sonata began. What's the urgency in speaking to me? Sonata asked. Our mission was to deliver this to you, Kurochi informed the Okage, stepping forward and placing a single scroll on the desk. What is this about? Sonata asked with curiosity, picking the scroll. Lord Tsuchikage is calling for a meeting between all five Kage, Kurochi replied and Tsunade's head snapped up from the scroll. The Five Kage Summit was extremely rare, usually only occurring in times of war or peace talks. Akatsuki, Tsunade thought, her eyes quickly reading through the contents of the scroll. She looked sideways to Naruto who was entertained by talking to Ren, and completely oblivious to what Kurtsuchi had said. I see, Tsunade simply replied. Time and location? Tsunade asked formally. Five days from now. Lord Tsuchikage chose the Land of Iron due to its security and neutrality. Kurotsuchi explained, and Tsunade nodded. I'll be there, Tsunade replied, stamping the document and handing them over to Kurotsuchi. Thank you for your time, Lady Okage. Kurotsuchi bowed, as she and her team left the room. I'm taking you with me, Tsunade said towards Naruto, 
who nodded in acknowledgement. I've never met Anoki personally, Naruto muttered, dropping his head back to the couch. Minutes went by and Naruto started groaning again, much to Tsunade's annoyance. This is boring, Naruto sighed, waving his arms in frustration. Naruto, Tsunade began sweetly. Go away. Naruto gulped and bolted out of the room, not wanting to unleash the wrath of Tsunade Senju. Leave, Mito said politely. Naruto gulped and ran away from the village's walls where Mito was looking at the perimeter seals. Go away, Minuto said, pushing Naruto out of the compound. The boy was getting on his nerves. Out, Tobirama shouted, kicking Naruto out of the Anbu division on the other side of the village. This sucks, Naruto thought to himself, walking aimlessly. Everyone was busy, now Naruto had nothing to do but stroll around Konoha. He sighed and spotted Konohamaru and the gang a few feet away. Hey, Konohamaru, Naruto shouted, approaching him, Moigi, and Udon. Yo, boss, Konohamaru greeted him enthusiastically. What you doing here? Konohamaru asked. Want to learn a new technique? Naruto offered, and Konohamaru's eyes sparkled to happiness. Of course, ow, 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 Konohamaru yelled in pain since Moigi was tugging rather than harshly on his ear. You won't be learning anything today. We have a mission, Moigi huffed, keeping Konohamaru in line before he and Naruto bolted at some training ground. I guess, Konohamaru muttered, nursing a swollen ear. I'll see you later, Konohamaru said, and left with his team towards the gates. What am I going to do? Naruto whined and thought, dropping his head. There's always ramen, Naruto thought, his eyes lighting up as he ran full speed towards Ichiraku's, swearing to set a new record today. On the other side of town, Teuchi felt a shiver crawl up his spine, and for the life of him, he couldn't tell if what was coming was a good or bad thing. Yo, old man, Naruto called, pushing the curtains wide open and sitting in one of the stools. Naruto, Ayame greeted him cheerily. Ayame, Naruto cheered seeing Teuchi's daughter at the counter. It's been a while, Naruto said, and Ayame nodded. So, how many? Ayame asked cheekily while Naruto laughed in reply. I'll be- Ah! Naruto sang when a crippling headache rendered him to the floor. Naruto! Ayame yelled, jumping over the counter. She knelt beside him and helped turning him around, cradling his head. Naruto was breathing hard and had a small trail of blood leaking from both eyes, his mongekyo turning on full power. Ah, uh, uh, fine. Naruto struggled to answer, his breathing slowly returning to normal. You are not fine, Ayame snapped, taking a tissue from her pockets and cleaning his face. This is not fine, she said, showing Naruto the bloodied napkin. Naruto looked at the napkin and brought a hand to his own face, gently running his fingers over his cheek. He looked at his hand and grimaced when he spotted the blood smeared over the skin. I'm good, Ayame, Naruto said, dropping the affectionate name and getting up. I've gotta go, Naruto said and rushed away. What happened? Krama asked with apprehension. I felt the massive chakra surge from your eyes. Someone ripped the ghetto mazo out of my Kamui dimension, Naruto replied, rushing to the hospital. It's not possible, Krama said in disbelief. You better believe it because it's not there anymore, Naruto replied, with Hinata. Hinata was having a rather peaceful day at the hospital. She had completed her daily clinic hours and was now in her own private laboratory, working on her research. She let out a small shriek of surprise when the door burst open and Naruto rushed inside. Where's the Renegon? Naruto asked immediately. What? The Renegon? Naruto asked once more. Why is there dried blood in your face? Hinata asked concern. Hinata, I'm fine. Naruto reassured her, placing a single hand on her shoulder. He took a deep breath to calm down. Where's the Renegon? Naruto asked. And Hinata motioned for him to follow. Hinata went to a fridge that stood nearby and opened the door. She took out a single vial and Naruto could see two floating eyeballs in the midst of the greenish liquid. That's not possible, Naruto said, looking in shock at the Renegon from Nagato. He had given it to Hinata so she could run a few tests and perhaps find out who it belonged to. After all, you need both Uchiha and Senju blood to achieve the Renegon, and both clans were from the leaf. What's not possible, Naruto? You're not making any sense, Hinata replied softly, and watched as Naruto sat down and brought his hands to his head. Someone summoned the Ghetto Mazo, Naruto explained, and Hinata's eyes widened. Someone ripped it out of my Kamui dimension. That alone takes a powerful chakra or someone with a lot to use. And I mean a lot. High Kage at least, Naruto explained. What are you going to do? Hinata asked softly. We can't wait any longer. See if you can speed up the DNA results of the eyes, Naruto explained, and Hinata nodded, going back to work at full speed. And you? Hinata asked, never looking off the microscope. I'm going to train, Naruto replied, and was about to vanish in a flash when he saw Hinata stumble. 
He was beside her in the blink of an eye and gently grabbed her. You alright? He asked, concern in his tone. I had just felt lightheaded for a moment, he not answered, steadying herself once more. My eyes hurt, I guess I'm tired, he not mumbled, rubbing her eyes that dulled a slight pain she had. Don't push yourself too hard, Hinata. Naruto pecked her cheek and vanished in a flash. Hinata rubbed her eyes once more before going back to work. Later that day, Senju compound. There was a somber mood at the Senju compound, especially around the Biju since they heard from Naruto the possible existence of another Renegon somewhere out there. They thought they were free at last, free of human control, but fate, it seemed, had another plan for them. The only safe place now was in Konoha. Naruto knew that the Ghetto Mazu was far away, and that was enough for him, for now. It was a good thing he hadn't sealed it back to the moon. Otherwise, he would have never known if someone else had summoned it back here, to the Earth. Every dragon, including Tsunade and the pervert, were gathered in the kitchen. They waited in silence for Hinata to arrive with the DNA results. Enough of this, Hinata said sharply, snapping everyone from their thoughts. It's not like the statue had the Biju in them. They only have a hollow husk, she said. It's not about the Biju. It's about another pair of eyes existing somewhere out there, Naruto stated. It's just a Renegon, Shinai said, crossing her arms while Naruto shook his head. You have no idea the full power of the Renegon. Naruto let out a chuckle. It's not just another pair of eyes like the Sharingan or a Byakugan. Sure, you can access some nifty ninjutsus with them, but that is not what I'm talking about. They aren't called the eyes of God for no good reason. Bringing back the dead. It's just a parlor trick. With barely a year of experience in using the Renegon, I already have enough skill to destroy the moon and create another just like it, Naruto said, and everyone's jaw dropped. The human body peaks at around 25 years old, which means I'll only get stronger until then. And as I age, so will my skill and control over the Renegon. Eventually, there will be nothing from stopping me from destroying this world and simply creating one of my own image, Naruto said, and everyone just stared at him. The Renegon offers me absolute control over life, death, time, space, destruction, and creation itself. I can already create and destroy many things. In time, dimension hopping will become as easy as breathing. The next step would be perfect control over the yin-yang release itself allowing me to use every single jutsu in the world, be it bloodline or not. So you see, the Renegon isn't just some eye, Naruto finished, and everyone was slack-shot at the explanation. But you aren't going to, are you? Snotty asked wearily, seeing Naruto frown his eyebrows in confusion. Destroy the world and create another in your image, Snotty gulped, and everyone stared at Naruto, who held a smirk. Maybe, Naruto replied mysteriously while Tsunade just stared at him blankly. Just joking, but you know the stories of the Renegon very well. It is said that in times when the world is in disorder, a person is sent down from the heavens to become either a god of creation who will calm the world, or a destroyer who will reduce everything into nothingness, Naruto finished. Some jewel we got from the heaven, now muttered and smirked towards Naruto. Hey, he snapped. I take offense at that, I'm very... Hinata, Naruto stopped mid-sentence. When everyone heard Hinata enter the room, I've got some good and bad news, Hinata said, sitting down and placing a small folder with documents on the table. Which ones do you want first, she asked. Let's start with the bad ones so that the good ones can cheer us up, Naruto said, and Hinata nodded. The bad news is that I couldn't find an exact match on the database, Hinata informed, and Naruto shrugged his shoulders. It was to be expected, and the good news, he asked. I managed to find an exact match on the database, Hinata giggled, and Naruto stared at her blankly. I'm confused, he simply said. I think the Renegon is artificial to some degree, Hinata said thoughtfully. What do you mean by artificial, Tobirama asked, leaning into the conversation. Take Naruto, for example. Hinata began pointing towards the blonde. He is Renegon due to the Uchiha and Senju blood. However, he only has one DNA, like everyone else. He has a DNA signature, and on that, we can trace several Uchiha and Senju markers, not to explain, and everyone nodded in acknowledgement. This Renegon, however, has two different strains of DNA, Hinata said, and Tsunade's eyes widened. It would seem someone mixed Uchiha and Senju blood together and hoped for the best. The good news is that I don't think this Renegon is fully functional, since both bloodlines aren't properly merged like Naruto's. In this Renegon, both bloodlines are always fighting each other for dominance, Hinata finished, and waited for everyone to process the information. 
And how does it not being fully functional translate into its abilities, Naruto asked. He needed to know that information desperately. I can only speculate about that, Naruto. But if I had to guess, since both yin and yang energies aren't properly balanced, he might be able to access the six paths, maybe a few limbo techniques. But I don't think yin yang release would be possible, he not to finished. And Naruto released a sigh of relief he didn't know he was holding. I'll sleep better tonight knowing this Renegon is weaker, but what about the other one out there? The one who summoned the Gidomazo, Hashirama asked. We don't know who's out there. The only thing we can do is wait for that someone to make his move. The good news is that he or she only possesses the empty husk, since I had already extracted the biju. But if they knew that the statue had biju inside, then they will know that someone else has a Renegon as well, Naruto explained. It's like a game of cat and mouse, Tabirama said while Hashirama patted his back. Enough about the artificial Renegon. What are the DNA results? Nani asked with curiosity. Like I said, I managed to isolate two different strains of DNA. I found a perfect match to the Senju DNA, Hinata said, pushing the report to Tsunade, who swiftly picked it up. 100 match to Hashirama Senju, Tsunade said, and everyone's head snapped towards Hashirama. What? He snapped. Are you telling me that there's a piece of me in there? Hashirama shouted, pointing to the floating eyeballs in the flask. Unfortunately, getting someone else's DNA is fairly easy. You only need a piece of hair, a little blood. A simple spar would suffice, not aside, and closed the report and picked up the other one. She quickly read through the details and her head snapped towards Minato. What? Minato asked confused, seeing Tsunade's gaze on him. Uchiha DNA, 25%, matched to Minato, Tsunade said. And 25% means, Minato asked, gulping under all the tension he was receiving. Grandfathers, grandmothers, aunts, uncles, half-siblings, double first cousins, Hinata informed. Give me the isolated Uchiha DNA, Naruto said, and Hinata threw him a vial. Yin Yang style, creation of all things, Naruto said, and the glass vial started floating in his hand. The glass instantly shattered, leaving behind only the genetic material. Everyone watched with enrapt attention as Naruto created a body from a small sample of DNA. As the body started forming and growing, anyone could clearly see he was male, with long black hair, with the slight tinge of blue. His bangs parted down the center of his face to frame both sides of it. Shit, Tobirama said, jumping to his feet instinctively. He looks familiar, now muttered. Who is that? Snade asked towards Tobirama and Hashirama. Judging from their expressions, they knew very well who laid in the ground, breathing evenly. Ugh. The person on the ground groaned just before opening his eyes, and almost immediately, a familiar red color swarmed his eyes. Izuna. Uchiha. Aishiteru.